Hi, I'm Jen Tripp, Executive Director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. One of the benefits of membership is networking events. Kathy Zollner is the chairperson of the Women's Networking and Breakfast Group, which meets once a month at American Alarm in Communications. Join us as she introduces Christine Penny, owner of Something Sweet Without Wheat, who talks about how following her passion led to sweet success. I hope you enjoy it. It's great to see everyone. Happy spring. Um, I happen to be gluten-free myself. Um, and I'm always interested in hearing other gluten-free stories about people. And um, there is a product called Cup for Cup. It's a flour that was um, developed by a famous chef, Thomas Keller, uh, for his restaurant. It's now available through um, Williams Sonoma. Um, and many, many other companies are developing their own gluten-free flours to make it easier for people to make their own baked goods. And I think something sweet without wheat is probably testing out yes, we are. their very own gluten-free flowers. But the story is that a woman came to Thomas Keller's restaurant. And I'll try not to cry over this. Because <laughs> we were crying this morning about it. And she found out that she could actually have a dessert along with the people that she was dining with. Because she hadn't had any sweets. And she was gluten-free. And they said, oh no, we have gluten-free desserts. And she started to weep at the, at the table. So um, I, it's, it's amazing, people don't understand what it's like when they can never partake or maybe have a, a birthday cake ever again or something like that, that they was a tradition in their family. Um, it's not that you have to indulge every day, but sometimes it's nice to have just a little sweet. So let me tell you about Christine. Christine's passion for, and her last name is Penny, uh, her passion for gluten-free baking was born by her own family's severe food allergies, including those she had for herself and those of her niece. Christine and her sister Sandy founded Something Sweet Without Wheat in 2010 by bringing their, local bake, their baked goods to a local farmer's market. They received great reviews and had such a lo loyal following that they opened up a wholesale facility and bakery. And a year later, they established a second location run by Christine's son Joe, right here in Arlington, right in um, East Arlington. A year later, they established a second, I'm sorry, in addition to their two locations and countless retail partners, they serve many of the top universities, hospitals, and restaurants in the New England and East Coast areas. They have been featured in Boston Magazine, Fox 25 News, Chronicle, The Boston Globe, and have been asked to film a segment for America's Test Kitchen in April, which you were busy doing. We did that last night. Last, oh, late last, last night. <laughs> Something Sweet Without Wheat has been the exclusive gluten-free caterer to a number of Hollywood movies filmed in Massachusetts. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Christine. Thank you, Kathy. Yep, yeah, so as Kathy was saying, we started this bakery really just out of necessity. Um, it started um, about, actually about eight years ago. My son and my niece were the first ones that found out they were sick with it. Um, I actually struggled my entire life with digestive issues. But as a kid, everyone always said, oh, she's a pain in the neck, stomach issues kind of push me aside. No one ever took it seriously. Um, I found out when I was 30 years old that I had ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. They put me on high medications. Today, I do not take any medication at all. I just changed my diet. And I'm happy to say that I don't have to be stuck to the, the medication any longer. And it was all just, I was allergic to wheat and dairy. So yeah, it happened. It was a very, um, very good finding on, on this doctor that we went to. So um, back about eight years ago when this all started, um, my niece found out she had Crohn's disease. We found this doctor who is a biomolecular immunologist, Dr. Emmons is his name. He's in um, Hampton, New Hampshire. And at the same time, my son, who was a sophomore in high school, Joe, who opened our Arlington store for us, um, healthy kid, hockey player, good student, life was wonderful. He um, got a very bad cold and couldn't wake up took him to the doctors, and they did all kinds of tests, and they said, oh, he has mono, he's fine, he'll sleep it off. Well, after two days, I said, this is not mono, something very crazy has gone on with him. He couldn't concentrate, he was looking at his hands funny. I went into his room, and he had just got out of the shower, and I said, Joe, are you all right? This cold is getting worse. And he had said to me, um, are you standing next to me, or do I think that you're next to me? I said, he just came back from hockey practice, and then we had a really bad cold, and I said, did you go down tonight? Did you get hit in the head at hockey? My husband said, no, I was there. I said, what happened? He said, 
I don't know, the whole way home, he didn't know he was in the car. I couldn't imagine what was going on. Called the doctor that night, 10 o'clock, I said, this is not mono, something very severe is, is obviously happening here. Um, backtrack, they didn't say it was mono yet, they said it was a bad cold. He said, this sounds like mono, bring him in in the morning. As a mother, you know, I knew it wasn't mono. Mm -hmm. So I brought him in the morning, they, the test came back negative, they said, well, we still think it's mono because he's so tired. I said, no, it's a lot more than mono. We were at Children's Hospital for two weeks, no diagnosis. When they left, they said, it's some kind of a illness, virus, we don't know what it is. Um, so this went on for two weeks, he finally got his life back together, came out of it. Two months later, the same thing happened. This was happening, it was very cyclical, it was happening every two months. By the end of this, we were in Tufts Medical, we found a doctor who said, okay, good news, I know what's happening to your son. Because this would happen, as, as it happened, it would last for two weeks. He would sleep 20 hours a day, we couldn't wake him up, and when he was awake, he was very confused and disorientated. So as you can imagine, I stopped working, my life became my mission to figure out what's going on with my son. We found this doctor, when I was talking with Dr. Emmons, he said, I'll tell you what's going on with your son. He got, um, his immune system got weakened by wheat and dairy. It shut him right down. At, back then, I hadn't even heard of gluten-free. I didn't even know what it meant. I said, well, what's this gluten-free? He said, you have to put him on a gluten-free diet. They gave him mega vitamins. We put him on the diet. And, you know, I was kind of like, that's ridiculous. How was food making this happen? I just didn't believe in it. So in the very beginning, I really wasn't buying into it too much. Joe was getting sicker and sicker, losing chunks of his life, losing half the school year, missed, on the, missed out on the prom, missed out on every occasion that a child is going through life, you know, he's supposed to go through. This doctor said, you need to get serious, so I put him on the diet, um, and within a month, Joe woke up, he was not sleeping anymore, he was living a regular life. Now the challenge was finding good food. Mm. Being an Italian family, mother was Teresa Rossetti, so you can imagine. <laughs> 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 was very big in my family. We were all about the food. So I started buying what I could find in the stores, and the bread was horrible. When you went to cook with, you know, eat it, it broke in half, the bread had to be toasted. I said, oh, we can't live this way. So we started experimenting because of my niece, who had the Crohn's, and my son. They both, the same doctor wanted both kids on a gluten-free diet. At the same time, he tested me, and he said, well, that's your problem, too. You have the colitis and the Crohn's, but you need to be on a gluten-free diet. So we all switched over, the three of us together, gluten-free, dairy-free. My sister and I started experimenting with recipes, playing around, and we developed a bread that we thought was fabulous that did not have to be toasted, and it tasted and felt like a real bread. Well, the business actually started because it was um, Christmas time, and I had made, we, our tradition, and I'm talking about traditions, were Anna's cookies. Since I was a little girl, we made Anna's cookies every mm -hmm. holiday. So Christmas was approaching, and I thought, oh, Oh my God, how could it be Christmas without homemade Anna's cookies? So I spent literally a week in the house. I didn't leave. I was like a mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to figure out how to have our Christmas with Anna's cookies. And I kept on experimenting till I got it right. Well, my neighbor, Italian guy across the street, um, every year his mom had passed away and I always sent over Anna's cookies. And this year I made a tray and I sent it over and he called me back and said, oh, big family party again tonight, there's none left, will you send her back over? I said, well, I'm going to tell you something, they were gluten-free this mm -hmm. year. He said, they what? Mm -hmm. I said, gluten-free, he goes, what does that mean? Just send them over. Mm -hmm. I said, we didn't even know. I was like, they were good, you know, mm -hmm. so that's great. So I took him to a, a store in our area, um, a natural food store that I used to buy my flowers in, and I brought him to the owner to say thank you, and I put him on the counter on a pretty dish, and customers were coming into shop, and they thought they were samples. And they were eating them, grabbing them, and they said, where do I find them? And the owner said to me, would you consider selling them? They're so good, everybody wants them. Yeah. And my older son, Joe, who was at that time, um, was just about a senior, had kept on telling me, Mom, open a bakery, you should do it. Well, I think I wanted to prove to him, actually, that's how, really how it started. You know, Joe, you work, he was getting ready for college, you work hard, you do something, you can make it happen. So I said, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I went to the town hall, I got my permit, started out in my house, got safe serve, and I said, I'm gonna make this happen. I said to my sister, let's do this. She said, all right, we'll do it together. So um, we started out because of that Anna's cookie, just because it was Easter, uh, Christmas time. And I went back to that bakery, brought them in the cookies, and they were taking regular orders. And then the farmer's market in our hometown in Stoneham asked us to join their farmer's market. We did. And we got such a following at the end of that season that my husband said, well, I think this is a real business. Let's get a building. So we got a building in Wuben. There was a big um, bakery that was leaving. And we went in there. We gutted the whole thing out, started fresh. And we thought that we were just going to have this little business on the side. We had no idea it was going to explode to this large business. Um, we now have 18 employees wow. Yeah, in our Wuben facility. And <coughs> that went so well, we 
right away before we were even ready, we got into some pretty large chain store, uh, restaurants and stores. And we, my sister and I literally went knocking on doors. We would go to a store, we would walk in with our products, and the minute they would see it, oh, because if I would call, they'd say, oh, gluten-free, we're all set. I would walk in with the tray and they would look at the pumpkin whoopie pie or the brown and oh, I think I'll taste that. And nine out of 10 times they took our products in. Because there is a lot of gluten-free out there, but a lot of the gluten-free tastes like traditional gluten-free. It's very gritty, it crumbles, and you know, we had a mission to t make food that was really gonna taste like good, good tasting food. So we just started knocking on doors and um, that's how we got into most of our stores. And then I think about um, two years ago we expanded. We started out with 2,400 square feet the company was getting so much larger, we took the back side of the building, now we're in a little over 7,000 square feet. Yeah, um, and then we decided that this has really taken off. So now we have a baker that comes in during the night, comes in at 10 o'clock at night, he makes bread all through the night, and the second, the second baker joins him at uh, four in the morning. Then we have the girls come in around um, five, they start packaging all the bread. Then we have the girls that come in that do all the cake decorating. So um, this, out of something kind of negative, the illness, mm -hmm. Something wonderful was born, the bakery, something sweet without wheat. And that's how it started for us. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, something good came out. Can I ask why you, why you chose Arlington? Well, I actually lived here as a kid. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I lived on Pheasant Avenue, and I moved to Stoneham um, when I was in the third grade. So I gave my mother a terrible time. I didn't want to leave my friends. So I had this one girlfriend that lived um, down the street from me, and every weekend, my Poor mother, looking about now, gonna drive me back to Arlington. I stayed with her for weekends. I just, I loved, I just loved my friends in Arlington and didn't want to leave. Coincidentally, when we were searching for a second location, we would get phone calls every day in Wuven because we're an industrial area. Right. Can you open another store in a busy location? How about, how about Arlington? How about Cambridge? Mm -hmm. We got so many phone calls for Arlington. I said, well, I love Arlington. That's, that's my roots. I'd right. love to go back to Arlington. So we started looking. So ironically, how it actually we came to Arlington was. There was a family um, that had a granddaughter that had celiac disease. And we sell to a lot of stores, and one of them was Wilson's Farm in Lexington. Right. This husband and wife went in there and found our bread. Well, this woman sends me an email, and she says, oh my god, after seven years, we finally found a bread that my daughter will eat that tastes and mm -hmm. feels like real bread. Mm -hmm. She said, we actually started crying when we ate your bread. Mm -hmm. She said, I would love to meet you, and I thought, Hmm, okay, you want to come down? Sure, come on down to the bakery. So she came down and we sat and talked to her for a while and she said, I want to be a part of this. I said, how? What do you, what do you want to do? She said, I don't know, but I, I just want to be a part of this. I want to pay it forward. We want to help your business grow. We just, we want to be involved. Can I, can I be involved somehow? And we, we just loved her immediately and I said, yeah, we'll find her wishes. I'll do marketing. I'll do anything. I want to be involved with you girls. So um, her husband decided he wanted to invest in us. And he took a liking to my son, Joe, who at the time had just graduated college. And he said, you know, let's open a second location. You and I will business together. We'll be partners. Let's find a location. Mm -hmm. So we started hunting around. As I said, we got a lot of phone calls from people in Arlington asking us, Arlington, some of them Cambridge. So um, we started looking around, and we found the spot on Mass Ave. And we said, this is a great location. Yeah. You know, right in East Arlington. Wow. Arlington's right there. It's perfect. So that's how we ended up in Arlington. That's great. Yeah. They originally wanted us to go to Needham. I said, that's too far from mm -hmm. our Wuben location. Right. We're gonna go back and forth every day. I want a place that I'm comfortable with. Right. So Arlington was just a perfect fit. From our home in Stoneham, it takes us 10 minutes, so yeah. it's great. It worked out really well. You know, and our whole family is now a part of it. Right. My mother left her job two years ago. She called and she said, hi. I said, hi. She said, I just gave my notice. I said, why? You've been there for years. I'm gonna come work for you girls. <laughs> <Not down well. laughs> and she still tries to boss me around. <laughs> Yeah, um, our daughters, my daughter and my sister's daughter are both in college together at Endicott. They both go to the same school and they work for us as well. Every vacation they come in, our youngest are both seniors and every vacation, they, you know, every uh, summertime, every day off, they walk in. I said, grab an apron, put right. your net on, wash your hands, get to work. Right. <laughs> so um, it became right. a wonderful family business for us. Right. We started out and um, my youngest son was playing hockey about two years ago and he had an injury. So we were at Winchester Hospital through the night. The next morning, um, they only had eggs and like um, fruit for breakfast. Right. I said, you don't have anything gluten-free? No, we don't. I said, oh, I'm going to come visit you next week when my son's better. So we did, and we got into that hospital. Mm -hmm. they, they started carrying our products, and then from there, Faulkner Hospital, I think, started. And, wow. um, Beth Israel, um, we've been talking with them. We're, we're now just starting to work with them. 
we got a wonderful phone call about a year ago from a woman that came to the bakery in Wuben. She said, I've been in the hospital and very sick. I was in Tufts Medical, and every morning I was having your toast. And it was the cinnamon raisin. And I finally said to them, I love this bread. Where is it from? They said, oh, a local place in Wuben. She said, I live in Wuben. They said, where is this place? I'm sick without wheat. And so we didn't even know we actually sold to that hospital. We sell to a lot of distributors. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the distributors kind of put us in all the different stores. Um, so that's how we um, kind of got out there. We sell to um, another hotel, the Four Seasons. They do a beautiful brunch on Sunday mornings, and they use all our, our um, baked goods. And then the Sheridan, and the, from the Sheridan, I think the Colonnade and the World Trade Center. So all the chefs talk to each other. So we take a ride out to one of these um, locations. We bring our products, and they tell the next person. And, and uh, so it became not just a retail bakery. It became a wholesale bakery. So my sister and I, Sandy, we work in the Wuben location during the week. We do all the seals, and um, that's where we are we're on the road most of the days. And on weekends, I come to Arlington and help Joe. Hmm. That's wow. Great. Yeah. Very nice. I have a couple questions yeah. for you. I'd love to know how <coughs> you got your roles into legal seafood. Oh, and yes. And the other question is, can you tell us about your biggest challenge along the way? I can, yeah. So um, I'll start with legal seafood. Mm -hmm. um, Legal Seafood, we um, would always go there for dinner ourselves, and they offered gluten-free dinner rolls. I don't know if anyone ever tried them, but they weren't really, they were more of a muffin than a roll. So we used to bring our own, actually, just keep them in our pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd pass them out to the kids, our whole family's gluten-free, and we would all eat them. Um, and we got working with a distributor called Dole and Bailey. They're also in Wuben, um, not down street from us. And through them, they um, said, you know, they brought, us, they brought samples in. They said, they're interested in your dinner rolls. So we were lucky enough to, to get in there. And they also use our croutons. Well, the great thing is, we're, I think they're down as far as Florida. We service all of the legal seafoods. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. and I didn't realize that. I thought it was just in general area. I got a phone call from one of the chefs from um, the legal seafood in New Jersey a few months ago. We've been there since February. And he called to say, I just want to let you tell, tell you that I'm getting phone calls from our customers. They come in, and they're so excited. They can't believe they're having a real dinner roll. They're coming in crying. They say, oh my God, this isn't that muffin that you used to serve. It's actually a dinner roll. Awesome. Yeah, he said, I just want to tell you girls, you did a great job, so thank you. So, yeah, so that was nice to hear. It was very nice. And the biggest challenge you asked us? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest challenge probably would be learning the ropes as we go along. When we first started, there was a very large chain grocery store. Um, we weren't even in our bakery at the time. We were still working out of the house. And um, they had tried the lemon drops. We got a phone call from the corporate office and said, we love these lemon drops. We would love to have them in, your, in our store. So we um, started the lemon drops. At the time, we weren't prepared. There was only eight of us. And so they ordered pallets. So we had to get a pallet, which was you know, a couple thousand cookies wow. to them. And we said, no problem. Well, this lemon drop had to be dipped. And you, it was a shortbread cookie. And we have a lemon icing on top. And so we literally called everybody we knew. Can you come on down? <laughs> <laughs> so we had big, big buckets. We'd make the ice and put in there and just dip all night long. Come on, we were like this. We were falling into the dip. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a very long night. And my husband came in one night and um, he said, Oh, we can't do this. We're yeah. going to find out a better way. So he investigated and he found a machine for us called the waterfall. So oh. we don't do that anymore. So we put the cookies on a long conveyor belt, and it goes through the waterfall, and it right. ices all the cookies. Oh. So luckily, what really helped us is the support of my husband. I actually, we won't tell him this, but he's, he's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the business was really happening. He said, you know what? This is going to be a real business. Let's, let's find a way to make this work. He got me the building in Woburn. Yeah. He also got me a machine that makes the cookies. In the beginning, we rolled all the cookies. But we were getting orders for you know, 20,000 cookies, right. and they wanted it in a week. We couldn't roll yeah. cookies that quickly. <laughs> we had to figure out a way to do this. So we have a machine now that we put everything into the hopper, and it goes down the assembly line, and it cuts into different shapes that we want. And so everything we do is now mass production. But we still, it's very still a very homemade place. We still put all the anise toppings ourselves and the cake pops that you girls have. We hand make those ourselves. So a lot of the stuff, the muffins are still all handmade. The whoopie pies, if you have tried a mm -hmm. whoopie pies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are still all hand done. So we had to really figure out how to, how, to get into, how to play with a lot of the bigger companies. So it was quite a challenge at the beginning. I was a hairdresser eight years ago. Never had anything to do with this corporate world or anything with the baking world. My sister was a nurse, and we didn't ever know we were going to be in the bakery business. So someone said to me, did you know you're going to be a baker? I said, Never in a million years. Yeah. I fell into this business. That's awesome. 
Yeah, so I think the challenge for us was learning how, learning the language and trying to figure out um, how to make it all work. That was the biggest challenge. And, you know, having a lot, a lot of employees is also, I have three children, and I always said way back then, I wouldn't do this until my youngest child was already in college. Well, my youngest was um, in eighth grade when this took off, and I just ran with it. And he's he survived. Yeah. He's yeah. going to I think Northeastern in the fall, so he'll be okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was a great learning experience for our children as well. I think they all they see what hard work is. They see we get in there at six o'clock in the morning, and some nights we don't get home till six seven o'clock. Holidays, it's mm -hmm. just crazy. We're in there morning till night, and they see the work that we're doing. And I think it's a great lesson for them to learn. You know, you have to work hard. Anything you want, nothing comes easy. Right. And you that's have to right. work at things, and so I think for that reason alone, I mean that's been that's been a, that was part of the challenge is how do we keep a family balanced and and have these careers? But um, we also have a wonderful team too. We have great people that work for us, so that's been a, that's been a great help as well. What does your husband do? He's an electrician. He owns his business as well. So he has a company called Penny uh, Electrical. Mm -hmm. um, so my son Joe works for him during the week, doing right. electrical during the week, and runs the bakery on weekends. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. How long has the bakery been open in Arlington? Uh, since 2010, Wuben was born, and we've been in Arlington. We just had our one year anniversary. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are you going to come up with a cookbook, or have you? We've been asked that quite often, but we tell people we can't give away all our secrets. Right. <laughs> That's right. People, people won't bake. I mean, some people, but you know what I mean? You'd never, yeah. I think, because there's a million cookbooks out there, but that people go to bakeries all the time. Yeah. And nobody, a lot of people don't have the time to bake. Yeah, that is a challenge. Some, I think at some point we will do that just for the fun of it because we get off, you know, we're often asked that. Yeah. If somebody calls and says, oh, I love it, tell me how, like last night we did that cooking show um, with the Gordon Culinary School and we um, made pizzas with them and um, bread pudding. The bread pudding was my mother-in-law's recipe from her mother from years ago. And I just changed over the bread. We make a cinnamon raisin bread in the bakery mm -hmm. that is so, I don't know if you ever had it, but if you toast it, the cinnamon and the cinnamon just comes current through, it's so delicious. And so that's what we use. So we made that last night, we just changed over the recipes. So I should tell you that most recipes that you see that you love, if you change your flours over, right. it'll taste the same. Mm -hmm. And gluten-free bacon, you usually need about four different flours. Mm -hmm. So for us, every baker has their specialty flours, but we usually use a combination of millet flour, sorghum, tapioca, white rice, brown rice, and then you need either xanthan gum or guar gum. That's the base of everything. In the very beginning, we had a lot of things that we just tossed in the trash. Mm. We thought, oh, gluten-free, we'll just go buy gluten-free flour and make some cookies. Right. Mm. Well, they were horrible <laughs> mm. <laughs> because they had one flour. We didn't realize that. We right. just used white rice flour thinking it would be great. So um, something to know is you usually have to use four different flours, and that's our base, those four flours. That seems to work best for us. So do you custom order your flour from a... So what we do is we buy everything by the pallets now. Everything okay. comes in 50-pound bags in our bakery, our big warehouse, and anyone's welcome to come for a tour anytime you'd like. It's a very pretty large facility. But we everything is um, comes in on the pallets in large quantity. So we order five different flours, and everything we make, we already custom make our blends okay. together. Yeah. Almost everything has the same base, but pizza has a different base than a chocolate chip cookie, right. or mm -hmm. a muffin has a different base than the calzones. Mm -hmm. So we usually have a few different that we kind of interact with different um, different recipes. Yeah. Have you found since you started in 2010 that um, sourcing has gotten easier, or there are more um, places to get the materials that you just described? Yeah. In the very beginning, we could only found it from this company in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. so that was very diff difficult for us because you know we were just starting out. We're a family business trying to make this happen, and the expense to get it here right. was just insane. Um, every penny that we had was put to trying to make this business work. And so we had to pay for freight, which lots of times was even more expensive than the flour. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that was back in 2010. But since then, we found a lot of other companies that are now local mm -hmm. that, are, that are selling all these products. So it's, it was very challenging in the beginning. The xanthan gum was almost unheard of. We couldn't right. even find xanthan gum back then. Mm -hmm. Now you can go to the supermarkets and find it. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So as you look back on your success, I mean, you're obviously very passionate <coughs> about what you're doing, and um, it, it shows in, in how you present, how your business has grown. Are there things from a business growth perspective that you would have done differently knowing what you know now? 
Um, I don't think there are. Was someone else asked me a question similar to that just recently? Um, I don't, because I feel like everything that we did kind of put us where we are now. You know, um, we like I said in the very beginning, we were just having fun at a farmers market, and that's all we thought we were going to do. <laughs> we had no plan for it to, to explode this quickly, but it just was happening, and we just kind of ran with it. Um, I don't think so. I think everything we've done, we've kind of learned from that very first big chain store. That I don't even say who they are. That took us something we weren't ready for in the beginning. We really had no business. We said, "Oh yeah, we can do it." Pallet? Sure. You know, eighty thousand cookies? Yeah, we can do it. And and we found ourselves struggling, learning. But because of that situation we're in, that taught us how to take care of the next um, obstacle and the next yeah. big store that came our way. You know, we're a lot wiser now, and we still every day we st still come, kind of come back up with these situations, but. I think because of that, we figure out how to do the next thing. Right. Yeah. So I've, everything we've everything we've done wrong has helped us along the way to do it right next time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you know, sometimes I say to people when they're afraid of jumping ahead and trying something new to feel the fear and do it anyway. Right. So talk about a little bit about how you handled. I mean, you must have had some sleepless nights. Plenty. And so, you know, how did you handle that, Christine? You know, the the not the being a fearless kind of go getter. Yeah. You know, we can do this, and having that positive attitude. Like, how did that all come about? You know, yeah. that positivity. You know, for some reason, um, it is in my nature to always think positive. I don't know where that came from, but I always, always think I can do it. I can do it. And when we first got that very first big store, I thought, how is this going to happen? And I just said, you know what, we'll find a made awake, made awake at work. And we never said no. We always say, we'll, we'll just do it. We'll figure it out and we'll do it. And so we don't think of it as, we got just recently we got another um, large um, order from a store. And we didn't even have the equipment at that time to do this. This was probably about a year ago. And I said, we'll just figure it out. And my husband said, we'll get the equipment. So we did some of what we call other bakers that we knew and said, you know, what do we need to do this? What kind of oven do we need? So we now have four large ovens. But at the time, two years ago, we only had two ovens. And we only had two bakers. So um, we just figured out, we're just going to always say yes to everything and then figure it out as we go along. And yes, there are many nights I went to bed in tears, come home from my, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. You know, crying, literally, because I got in bed and said, what was I ever thinking of saying yes? I don't know how to do this. You know, but I would call, I would resource. I have a lot of um, friends that I found through the, through the way that were in this business. I would call them and say, this one guy in the very beginning, we bought a machine to um, make the cookies. And he became a very good friend. His name is Peter. And I said, okay, Peter, I don't, I don't even know how to do this. What do I do? And he kind of talked me through the whole step. Because once you get in with these big chains, you right. have to know how to carry it through. So they wanted, um, for instance, lot sizing. So, so if you get flour, you have to... Um, date it, put the lot on so that every product, if you have had a recall, you would have to know exactly where that product went. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do any of that. So he says, I'm going to come to the bakery tomorrow. I'll show you how to do that. So he gave us classes. He set the whole bakery up and showed us how, how to do all that. Pallets. I didn't know how to build a pallet years ago or um, the process that was all about. So it was all really networking. Like I kind of wasn't afraid to ask people to, for help. Um, I have another neighbor who also is in the food service business. I called him, I said, and I was a hairdresser, I said, as I told you back then, I used to cut his hair. And he would say to me, when I cut, when I would cut his hair, he would say, don't tell me about the bigger what's going good, tell me what's not going good. I said, that's great. Okay. So when he comes down for haircuts, I still cut his hair. And he'll come, he'll go, all right, tell me, tell me the problems. And I'll say, oh, this is what's going on. I said, he said to me, let's figure it out. So he called a bunch of his friends that were um, all in the business world, a lawyer, a few of the business owners. They would come to our bakery. We meet um, once every couple of months, and we just talk about the issues. So when I go to bed at night and I think, oh my God, I don't know how to fix this problem, I call him the next day. Right. Can you get this group of men together? And we sit down, it's my advisory board, and we sit down and we talk about it. We co pack for a company called De uh, Dancing Deer Baking Company. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they manufacture um, their own products, but they wanted to have a gluten-free line, and they couldn't do it in their facility because it's flour and that's cross-contamination. So I wasn't sure this was a good idea for us because they wanted com um, a label they sell to Whole Foods and a lot of other stores, but they wanted their, their label on it, not ours. And I thought, I don't know if I want to do that. So I got this advisory board together and I said, because it was a sleepless night and I had to make a decision. I met with the CEO of that company and, you know, here I was. I wasn't anyone to be in, having these kind of meetings. I didn't know what I was doing. So I, I called him and said, I don't know if this is a good idea, but this is a good step for us. He said, I'll get the meeting together. So the next day we all went, we met at the bakery and I, 
um, did a little presentation. My son Joe came along because he takes care of the books as well. And Joe did his presentation, explained our situation, and um, they actually advised us not to do it, the board. There was six of them, and they all said, we don't think it's a good idea. Why should you promote another company's right. name? Why should you yeah. be promoting Dance and Deer Bacon Company? We think it's not a good idea. And um, my, Myself, my sister, my husband, and my brother-in-law, who works in the, in the bakery as well, I said, my stomach, my gut is telling me to do it, mm -hmm. and I've learned to listen to my stomach. You know that little thing that tells you yeah. don't do something or yeah. do it? I said, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. And the board all was against it. And um, they all said, we just don't, we would never do that. We think that you should only promote your own company. And I said, it's a chance, but I'm going to take it. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is their company gets, gets credit for this. Well, who cares? I'm, I'm still producing for them, and I'm going to learn by doing this. And actually, it was a wonderful thing. I'm so glad we did it. Because I learned so much about this, because they're a much larger company than we are, and we learned so many tricks on the trade. Now, at the time, we weren't even gluten-free certified. We used certified products. All our products were certified gluten-free, but our facility was not gluten-free certified. But to work for them, we had to go through the process of this auditing program, and it was a very large, it's a lot of work, and I didn't know how to begin it. So we cut through them, they worked with me and got me hooked up with this company that certifies you. So I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have gone through the process if I didn't do this with Dancing Dare. So um, it was definitely a learning process, and I'm glad I did it. I didn't listen to the board. They all thought I was crazy, but again, you listen to your stomach, and I said, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. A few of them were a little upset that I went against them, but, um, you know, I just felt like it was the right thing to do, and it, it was the right thing to do. We learned so much from this company. And so our products are in Dancing Dare with their label, but we make them. So and if someone asked Dancing Dare, they would say? Yeah, they would say it. Right. Yeah, they would say it. And um, on the back of the label, it says produced, for a co um, produced by a company in Woburn, Mass. Oh, well. So that's us. We're on there. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Either way, people are enjoying them. People are still eating them. And there are a lot of people that were looking for a good cookie that mm -hmm. couldn't really get it, that was gluten-free and dairy-free. So my name's not on the front of it. I don't really care. Right. I just I look at it as it's business. Right. You know, and sometimes you have to sort of um, not try to put yourself first, mm -hmm. look at it as a business as a business move, and either way, we're getting the business, we're working, I'm keeping all my employees busy. Mm -hmm. January can be a slow month in the bakery business, not for us, because we were producing for this company. Mm -hmm. So we had work all the time. I'm keeping 20-something um, girls busy. We have a long, long assembly line. They're packaging for this company. Yeah. So it was a great experience for us. Yeah? Was it mainly your company, or were you and your sister co-owners? My sister and I are co-owners. So did you ever have any trouble coming to decisions together? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Oh, yeah, plenty of times. But, but she, with that particular one, did she say? No, she was on the She agreed with me. Oh, Her okay. and I tend to think the same way. Okay. The majority of the time, we think the same way. And if we don't, we usually agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we, we, it's funny to work with your sister. Mm. We, for some reason, can make it work. People are often surprised. We talk, as one of us starts talking, and the other one answers the other, uh, other one's sentences. We're kind of yeah. like a, you know, a husband and wife. Yeah. That um, we work very well together. And there are times that we'll go in the back room, her and I, at, at the bakery, and we'll just sit down in a meeting and I say, I don't think we should do it, or I think we should. And we'll kind of talk it out. We both probably think, we're both very strong. We want our own ideas to work. But at the end, we know it has to be right for the business. Right. So we've had lots of discussions that, you know, didn't go smoothly. Yeah. I drove home, oh my God, I'm so aggravated at her right now. Yeah. <laughs> and of course she did the same thing with me. But at the end of the day, we um, always talk it out and mm. we just find a way to make, because we know it's really right for the business in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and having my son Joe so involved in business is such a great thing, you know. He runs Arlington and even though he's only 24, you know, he went to college. I, I look to him for a lot of things. He gives me some great ideas. He's really good with marketing, and he's got a great business mind. He's really good with numbers. Yeah. So Joe has a lot to do with us behind the scenes as well. Mm. Yeah. And I can't run Arlington. I'm too busy with Woburn. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have Joe that runs Arlington right. for us. And uh, I go there on weekends and help him, and I drive him crazy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes? At Wilson's, where are your breads frozen? Fresh. They get them fresh. They get they get a delivery every um, Tuesday and Friday morning. Yeah, they get fresh bread. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, Tomorrow morning. morning. Yeah. So in Arlington, and um, Arlington's open Mondays. They're open Tuesday through Sunday, and every morning we make the bread at our facility in Woburn, and then our delivery truck drives it there every morning about eight o'clock. So there's fresh bread every day in um, in Arlington. Awesome. Yeah, and then we have the cake decorators that can make any themed cake that you you know, and they're great. 
They make all kinds of cakes. Um, the holidays are coming up. We do pies. Something I was missing. I grew up with tiramisu. You know tiramisu? Yeah. 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 And that was a pastry I was really missing. So, buddy, this past winter I said, oh, I'm really, for Christmas, I really want to make tiramisu. So we have a girl that does a lot of R&D. So we created for about a week till we thought it was right. And so now we offer tiramisu. We offer cheesecake. Um, if you go to Davio's, you know Davio's mm -hmm. restaurant? They use our um, Italian herb bread. And if we say you're gluten-free, they give you a basket of, and it's our herb bread. They heat it up with all the nice oils. Yes. Are you soy flour? Am I right? Soy flour? Some of our products have soy. We don't. I actually can't have soy, but I can't have soy flour. I can have soy lecithin, and a lot of people can actually have that form that don't realize it. So we don't use soy flours, but there is soy lecithin in some of our products. Yeah. Um, Regina Pizza uses our pizza crust. So if you go to Regina, you can have it's our pizza, but they put their own toppings on it. Um, so it's nice to be able to go out and find a place that you can actually go out to eat because food is very social. And you want to be able to go out and enjoy a nice dinner. Yeah. Do you have on your website where your products are? We do. We do. So talking about challenges, the website was quite a challenge. Um, about two years ago, we just said, okay, it's time for us to get an online store. So we found this guy that was going to build a website for us. Paid him a lot of money up front. Lesson learned. Uh, six months later, I still didn't have a website. And he all of a sudden was not answering phone calls. Wasn't coming, you know. I put so much money into this. I was heartbroken. Another, another cry. Another night, I went to bed crying. Um, lost all that money. We lost all that. Um, had to start from scratch. Then I found someone else. Someone recommended another guy that was supposed to be great. This website, for some reason, took so long to get up. This time, I only I learned. I said, I'll give you half up, half up front and half at the end. He got halfway through it. He did a horrible job. It, it, he wasn't. He just wasn't. Um, fall on his end of it, didn't do good, we had to stop that. Oh, I said, I can't believe we can't get an online store and a, and a great website. Um, a friend of ours that was friends with my husband said, I know a guy that's really good, I recommend him. I, I, did really, I really researched the guy this time. And he built our website, we have an online store now. So um, it's a great store and we, are doing, we do a lot of business with the website. If you go on the website, it's www.somethingsweetwithoutme.com and you put an order in Monday through Thursday. We ship it out that day. I have a department that does works on the online stores. You get it the very next day. That's wow. great. Yeah, we go, it ships all over the place. Mm -hmm. Birthday cakes we ship, the fresh breads, the muffins, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some items we don't ship because they don't, they don't hold up as well in the shipping process, but the majority of the products we do ship, mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a list, getting back to your question, but there's a list that says <coughs> what restaurants you're in? Yes, there is a list of, it's, I think it says um, uh, partners or locations, mm -hmm. and if you click on that, it tells you everywhere that we sell to. Great. Yeah. Know, yeah. Hmm. yeah. We're in about, um, I think we're in, we're in over a thousand locations right now, wow. including we're in, um, so I, as I said, my sister's daughter and my daughter go to Intercott College. So when they were first getting ready into the college, my daughter's now a senior, a couple of years ago, the biggest challenge was, oh God, what will they eat? So we met with the department there and we said, these are our daughter's challenges. We know you about the gluten-free students here. Coincidentally, my daughter's, uh, now my daughter has asthma and that was her situation. And we took her to this doctor and he said, if she's on, she has asthma, she was having a terrible time with running and track, she needs to be on a gluten-free diet. I said, well, we're all gluten-free anyway, this is perfect. So he put her on that diet, she doesn't even use her inhaler anymore. Yeah, it was amazing. When she got to college, her roommate had celiac disease. I said, oh my God, God put her with you for a reason. <laughs> so it was great. So I would, I would always go up and visit my daughter and bring her fresh breads and products and muffins. And the other girl obviously was thrilled that her and, her and my daughter were roommates together. And then when my niece joined the college two years later, um, again, we met with the cafeteria and the staff and we explained the situation and they started bringing our, our products in. And then from there, I think um, we're in Northeastern, we're in MIT, Emanuel College, uh, Wentworth, Leslie, Salem State, U Lowell, Hampshire College, um, Brandeis. Yeah, we just literally knocked on the door. Can we meet with the department? We walk in, show them the products. And, you know, we met uh, with one of the chefs recently in, in Boston about a year ago in one of the hotels. I think it was the um, Sheridan. And he said, I don't know if I should love you or hate you. I said, well, love me, please, but why? <laughs> why do you want to hate me? He said, I've been a chef for 30 years. He said, and I cannot figure out how you're doing this. <laughs> I don't know how. Good. I said, well, you know, yeah, thank you. I said, honestly, we just played in fun. I said, you don't have to eat this way, so you probably don't work at it as much. We had to eat this way, and the choices that were out there, we just didn't like. They were horrible. Yeah. You know, when the kids were younger, when we go on vacation, I would have to bring my toaster up into the hotel to make a sandwich. 
for the beach because, you know, you couldn't, the bread that they used to sell and they sell in the stores, most of it they say in the back has to be toasted. And peanut butter and jelly is not supposed to be toasted. <laughs> so I said, this is ridiculous. I'm going to make a bread. We're going to figure out how to make a bread that you could eat without toasting. So we, you know, we were able to make a bread that didn't have to be toasted. Calzones. We missed calzones. Being a town, we always made calzones. We said, we're going to start making calzones. We, pop tarts. We make pop tarts. Uh, Yo-yos. That's an Oreo. We call it a yo-yo. So apple cider donuts. So we'd always go apple picking every year. And at the end, you always go inside and get the apple cider donuts. And our children were like, oh, we want a donut. We said, OK, we'll make them. So every time we found that we couldn't eat something, we said, we'll make it. Right. Yeah, we'll just find out how to do it. Yes? I know you're a bakery, but and you're Italian. So have you played around with pasta? Because to find a really good yeah. gluten-free pasta is tough. It's tough. It? That's a whole different animal. So we yeah. do make it at home for our families. Oh. <laughs> we don't sell it yet, or don't even, I don't think that's something we'll love to tackle. It's a whole, we need a lot of equipment for that, which we don't have in the bakery. Yeah. And quite honestly, I'm afraid that if we start doing something else, we're not going to do what we do right. well. Right, you don't want to shift right. your focus. Yeah, we thought about that, and we said, you know what, we should have to focus on what we're doing. Yeah. And I think if you spread yourself too wide, yeah. that's one thing we learned. Because when we first started, we said, we're only going to have these 20 products. We now have 60 products. Mm. And we say all the time, no more, no more. We're getting carried away. But it's so hard when someone calls you and says, can you make a carrot cake? Well, we know we can do it. And you had to say no to somebody, you know. About a year ago, somebody came in, and she asked for, um, she showed the Anna's cookies. She was in the, I was in Arlington that day. It was on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, my mother made those. She's passed away. That was our cookie. I said, oh, ours too. I understand. Yeah. So I said, here, I brought her. I gave her a sample. She started crying, tears pouring down her face. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I came around. I hugged her. I said, what's the matter? And she said, my mother, this was her cookie. This tastes exactly like wow. it. And we ate this as kids. And I can't believe I'm eating it again. It feels like my mother was with me. Mm -hmm. her, she's crying. I'm crying. And we're hugging each other. <laughs> so food is yeah. like so emotional. Right. Yeah. You know, when somebody comes in and tells us, oh my God, I can't believe we made my day. Mm -hmm. I can have good, good, good bread again, a good pizza. Like, I feel what they're going through. I'm so passionate because that's what brought us to this. We couldn't find good food out there. And we know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So I understand the challenges of finding good food. Barilla yeah. makes a really good gluten-free yeah, pasta. Barilla does. Barilla's yeah, good. Really now, good. I also have a corn it. allergy, yeah. so I can't have that because of the yeah. corn. But that's fabulous. I did try it one time, and I was sick for about a week. So, <laughs> <laughs> But it was good. It was yeah. good. I enjoyed it. Um, we love a company called Nantucket Pasta Goddess. Okay. It tastes like your grandmother made it, like your Italian grandmother. It's fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Nantucket Pasta Goddess. I believe that Whole Foods carries it. I know some of them do. Okay. Um, it is the best. Um, I don't have to worry about trying to make my own right. because I just her lasagna is unbelievable. There's another other brand out there that I like in the stores. Something quick is uh, Tinkiata. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, it's very very good. Tinkiata. 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 Some of them get very mushy. I don't. I don't want to put down any other products. I'm not going to say the names, but certain pastas, if you buy them, you follow directions, you go to put the sauce on, and they're mushy. They're not good at all. But Tinkiata is a very good product. I love that one. Can yes. You it's, I think it's T Y N K A Y A, something like that. T, um, tink, T. Is it T I N or T Y? I think it's T I N K Y. ADA? Something like Something that. Something like Tinkiata. that. You just get the gist of it. I think it also says on a joy of life. Or joy you of looking life it up on your phone, Mia? <laughs> All the stores carry that, though. It's very, very easy to get. I think Mia's looking it up. Oh, yeah. You can also, Mia, Mia and I were just talking about this earlier, too. You can also take <laughs> and spiral your zucchini and make your own pasta. Or, that is fabulous. Or you can cook too. spaghetti squash. Those spaghetti are squash, that's another good great substitutes, idea. and then you get vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a little store next to our bakery, um, um, East, Anthony's Eastside Deli. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has done some fabulous things. So he buys our breadcrumbs and he makes, if you anyone's Italian, you book the Arancini's, the rice balls. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Saw those. Oh, so good. They're just like the ones in the North End. And he also sells, he uses our breadcrumbs and makes meatballs. You can go in and get a meatball sub or a chicken palm. You know, know it's not a big deal. If, if you're not gluten-free, you don't understand. But being a gluten-free person and you're craving that, you just want to pull over and grab a sub for lunch, it's like, oh, I can just go in and get a sub right. somewhere. <laughs> it's such a bonus to be able to do that. Yep. Um, I have a question. Uh, why don't you open the Arlington Bakery earlier? Because I stopped by there earlier this week to get something to have with my coffee in the morning because yeah. I really need to be gluten-free. Like I found out years ago when I had a wheeze that wouldn't go away and I was yeah. going to 
high end inhaler, and then finally, so I almost like you asked me, like a weed cough. Yeah, that was yeah, like my daughter. And, weeds, and yeah. my doctor said, I think it's like a weed cough. And I also had um, intestinal problems, and I went off wheat and just got better. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That amazing? That that helps you? Yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes I let myself eat wheat and then I regret it. That's and right. Then, that's right. My daughter did that a few times when she was at school. So I've been really trying to be tough on the gluten free stuff. So I stopped by, and it's like 10 o'clock. Well, I start teaching at 9:30, and if it was even open at 9 o'clock, I could get something. You know, in the morning, and it's like that's the time I'm probably gonna get something. And it seems like most bakeries are open early. So I was just wondering if you'd consider open earlier. Yeah. Um, so I personally agree with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I personally agree. Um, Wubin is officially open at 8.30, but everyone that's in the area knows they can come in at 7, 7.30 and grab a muffin on the way to work oh, yeah. in the Wubin area. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. I think it should be open earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, the problem is, is we stay open until 6 o'clock at night, so it was hard to get coverage from early morning till late. Um, and a few times, the very, very beginning, when we first opened, we did try to open early, and they didn't feel like it was that busy enough in Arlington in the mornings mm -hmm. to open up that much earlier. They thought the business, we kind of did a study of when it was busier, and it was busier closer from 11 to 2, mm -hmm. so that's why they opened at 10. But I agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm a muffin person, and I like to start in the morning yeah. with a muffin, yeah. you know? Yeah, Luckily, that's I that's the thing, can just grab it. Not to eat the wheat muffins, which are so readily available, yeah. and I was like, okay, I'm going to go here because I can get that little bit of something with my Yeah, body. I and wish we could open open a little earlier, but they yeah. felt like they didn't get enough business yeah. in the morning, but I agree with you. Do you guys I, sell to other local bakeries? We do. We sell to a lot of bakeries that can't produce for themselves. Um, you should walk into the new one, the ADU. Which one? The new, the, the, the old Carberries. They don't have anything, and they're very health-oriented. Yes. Oh, right in Allenton? Yeah. 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 Oh, so right, 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 right after this. Here, yeah. I, uh, Kickstand Cafe? Kickstand, yeah, right so after the So they the also, like, they have, have gluten-free spring rolls. Yeah. They have, always have a oh. but their gluten-free products are not dairy-free. Oh. Yeah. Kathy, will you email that to me? I will. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'm all over it. <laughs> That's how we get most of our stores. Somebody says, I live in this area, right. you know, Donnellan's. We sell to all the Donnellan's markets, you know, somebody I said. I tell them about you every time I go in, but they, oh, I don't think thank you. the right person. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, that's how that's how we usually just just a customer someone says that for a certain store and that's how we usually ended up in most of the stores like that. We're all gonna go in today and ask for it. Oh, yes. thank you. Yes. Oh, I was gonna have lunch. Oh, you don't carry it. Okay, no thanks. So when I leave here today, I have a meeting in Newton with um, Fresh City. Oh, awesome. I met with them back in um, the fall, and they were interested in bringing the bread. That's he just great. called me a phone call last week, and now we're ready to start. So my son, my youngest son, loves Fresh City, right. and every time I'd go to, we'd go to, he'd only get the food in a salad. You know, boys, they want their, they right. want their bread, you know? And I used to always say, why don't you offer gluten-free bread? And I never did. Ironically, I got a phone call, and they said, we're interested in your bread. And I said, oh, awesome. I came in, he goes, oh, it wasn't from you. He said, we got so many phone calls from people saying they'd like something sweet without wheat's bread, and would we carry it? Cool. So, yeah, it's always exciting right. to get a phone call. What like about that. Be Good? Um, be good. I haven't been there yet, but I've actually got a few customers that keep on telling me I should stop in there. Because they, they just took good. out all their, they replaced their ketchup oh. with Kensington's and took out oh. all the Heinz. They got rid of their Coca-Cola machines. Oh, really? They have a local uh, place that's making soda without high fructose mm. corn syrup. Be good. Oh, yeah. there's a lot of them. I know there's yeah. one right in Burlington. There's one in Burlington? Yeah. 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 There's one in Harvard Square. Yeah. 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 Um, they, yeah, they do a I lot of local. Over there. Yeah, they're real, they're really the into local. I'll send you there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yep. In doing research, they say try to buy rice only from California because rice from other parts of the world has high in arsenic. I've read that on a couple of sites. Are you looking for that at all when you're buying? Well, the flour that we buy um, comes from a source um, from Bob's Red Mill, and we've talked to them about that, and they feel very confident that, they're, that their flour is a very safe flour to use. Are you familiar with Bob's Red Mill? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that's the company that we mainly use. We have a few different other sources, but that's our main but, source that we yeah, use. But yeah, they're saying, but as a consumer, when you're buying rice, like, and I look at the back, it says just buy it from California, because if you buy it from mm -hmm. elsewhere, Uh, that, uh, I buy the Lundberg from California. So you've heard that too? Yep. Yeah. Clover would be another good place for you to check out. Where? Clover. There's a, um, on Mall Road, there's a Be Good 
this clover, this is a Chipotle, but clover um, originated in Cambridge oh. with food trucks, and they're all vegan. Oh, yeah. Oh, but they use fabulous. Bread, and it's fabulous. <coughs> oh, that's really good to know. I didn't yeah. know that. I'll, I'll so check you, them you out. You can hit Burlington and hit Be Good and Clover. With yes, I'll do it all the same day. run. Yeah. 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 I guess we week all planned out for you. Absolutely. <laughs> and I have the owner, I think I have an owner's email from Be Good. Oh, thank you. See, that's all about women. They have, that's why I, I love to, working yeah, with women. Go. Women all help each other. It's all yeah. this networking. There's another place in the same strip. It's a um, slow bulbs. Oh, and it was started that. by the people that um, started Boston Chicken. Oh, oh Boston really? Market, and they're bringing organic food into um, barbecue. Oh, and they have okay. like cornbread, and that would be another place. Yeah, that's so good to know. Big trade because they're all right there. Oh, very good right to know. Right where Dandelion Green used to be. Oh, yeah, the old Dandelion Green, yes. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of vegan, we do have a vegan line. Um, we've gotten so many phone calls from people. Besides being gluten-free, we're majority dairy-free. Um, and so we've gotten a lot of phone calls from people asking us to make a dairy-free, uh, egg-free line. So we do make a cookie now that is gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. It's a chocolate chunk cookie, which is fabulous. It's chocolate, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it stays fresh for about two weeks. Um, it doesn't get hot or anything. And then wow. we have muffins that are, that are dairy-free as well, egg-free. Um, cupcakes, a pizza crust, doesn't have egg in it. We have pita chips, which are great for like hummus and salsa. Um, that's, yeah, we do have an egg-free line, speaking of vegan. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you, thank Christine. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much.